about the contents uh, what is it that you must include in the second part i'll be talking about the design um how must it look at the first part and then i'll be yeah and then i'll be going ahead and uh, talk about some of the key points that you must keep in mind and uh, some of the errors that we keep making as teachers when we are creating our first cv so um shangi could you share your screen now Um, guys, is she? Uh, is Shankari sharing her screen because I can just ask the team people. Okay. okay so um as you can see so i have created a sample resume of how it can look so to start i want to discuss about the content like that you must include so the that you can see obviously on the top your personal details which includes your name and your contact information so when i say contact information first mean your phone number and email address so these are the three key things that must be mentioned on top and uh, the reason why it must it is in bold is that um, of course whether uh, your recruit or the hr takes a look at your resume that must be the first thing that stands out so one thing that i'd like to mention here is that you must remember there's no need to put in a picture or mention your date of birth or any of that extra information because the companies are just not interested but then again it can vary from company to company and if in specific they ask for it then you must mention otherwise it's not needed so uh, after that yeah in this segment you can also include your current page or in but again that is option it's up to you whether you want to include it or not so going ahead uh, the first thing uh, that you must mention in your uh, resume is the objective so what i have written as you can see is just a sample like uh, what i have mentioned in my time i had just i have just put that out for reference so one important thing about mentioning the objectives is that um you must ensure that you change the objective based on whichever job position you are applying for uh, like just don't keep the same objective for all the options that you are applying for or uh, more importantly don't copy an objective from the internet because trust me the hrs and the people who are recruiting you they've gone through at least 100 resumes so it's very easy for them to catch you if a copy from the internet and that is a very bad first impression and in particular if you're applying for an actuarial role just remember that uh, the word actuarial must be there in the um that your sentence or um, so that you know the recruiter clearly knows that you're not just applying for any random job and that you're particularly interested for the actuarial openings only and one more thing that i think in my experience resonates a lot with the hr says that when you mention that you are looking for an opportunity to grow and at the same time you're looking to contribute to the company's success um and this is because the hr generally want to be very honest about and uh, that you mention in your resume or 
going ahead in your interviews. So if you just say, I want to enhance the skills of the company, the HR obviously knows that um, you're not speaking the whole thing. And of course, all of us as fresh as we should please grow and learn. So yeah, it, it's very important to mention these points. Then going ahead, um, as Tresha, the fun thing that uh, you must keep first in your resume is the education segment. Um, uh, I think you could scroll a little bit up. The education segment has gone up. up. Yeah, cool. So um, in particular, like this resume that I have find here, the sample one, this I have in particularly a particular design for the actual examinations, like actual uh, positions. So the first thing that you must mention for an actual role is what are the actual examinations you have cleared, the name of the paper that you have cleared, and the date uh, on which you passed the exam can also be included. Uh, name of the including the name of the paper is mandatory, but after that, including the date depends on you whether you want to do it or not, and it's a good option to include it. I would say. And not to mention in the book that Mark can also be included. This is totally up to you whether you want to do it or not. But like I mentioned at the beginning, that there are a few small things that set aside your regime from others that, um, you know, that catch the eyes of the uh, recruiter. So if you have done well in all of this and you think that your marks are worth putting there and, you know, displaying on top, then go make Put, make it like a, put the marks that have achieved to good use and put them down. It's not going to do you any harm. But then again, at the end of the day, it's your choice. And even if you don't mention marks, it's not going to affect your resume anyway. And nobody's going to ask you how much you scored. But again, I mean, yeah, it could give you brownie points if you will. The next slide, we are going to mention the graduate. Dates, that is uh, your sub name of the college or university that you graduated from, the honors subject, the CGPA that you've scored till now, or if you're currently like receiving, you can write that also. And the year of graduation if you've already graduated. So these are the key points for graduation, as well as your class 12 board details and class 10 board details. Um, the same thing must be mentioned the name of the institution, the subject. The most achieved and the year. Uh, going ahead, uh, could you pull up? Yeah, so the next segment, as you can see, I have labeled it as internship slash projects slash workshops. But when you design your resume, you are not going to do it this way. You have to write either internships only or internships and workshops, internships and workshops. Uh, or just internships and projects uh, based on what you include in the content segment. So if you're talking about internships, the key aspects you must mention here are the name of the organization that you work for, what is the position that you held, what was the duration of your internship, and one line about what you did or what you learned at this internship. And the next thing is projects or workshops that you attended. So see, when it comes to projects and workshops, trust me, the recruiter is not interested in where you did them or what, like, uh, it's, it's not, they are not interested in what grades you achieved in them or anything like that. They are just interested in what you learned and what values you're bringing to the table. So if you're mentioning these things like projects, workshops, or even internship experiences, just be very sure that you're totally like hundred percent confident about what you learned because in the interview rounds they are going to ask you in details. Because you know, you must understand that this is a differentiating factor. Like everybody's gone to college and done their graduation, but these projects and workshops that you've attended or internships that you have done, that is what gives you your additional experience. That is what sets you. So uh, when you're writing it's very important to mention it. And again, don't make it narrative, but it's important to mention in one line um, what is it that you learned? Why do you feel it added value? Yeah, you can see that, uh, like, uh, where did you do it or when did you do it? Just uh, primarily mention what you learned, what you did. And uh, yeah, I would say you don't make the segment too long. Like if you're making one point for your internship, one, one or two points for your internship experiences, make just one point for project. 
shops that you attended like right? don't just keep on tracking because nobody reads the whole thing uh, going forward uh, we're going to talk about technical skills uh so as you if you must be aware is something that has become very important when it comes to recruitment processes of late uh, these programming languages are something that all the companies are and it varies from anything from r excel python to um as sql it totally depends but then can be expected to have a full complete knowledge of of what is uh, like what of programming language expect you to have a basic idea and that is why you must mention what are the programming languages that you have learned or aware of and um one small thing that i mentioned here is that the level of knowledge in the beginner slash intermediate slash advanced and i mentioned that and i it's why why is to you know just point out in the resume says what is your level of understanding of the subject is that um see the person who's recruiting you or the person who will take your interview it's very likely that they're going to be far more knowledgeable than you right so they can ask any random questions if you don't mention your level of skill or understanding but when you mention in the beginning that you're a fresh that you're a beginner or you just intermediate knowledge about the subject they're more likely to be sure about what they should expect from you as a candidate so yeah they were just uh, being very clear and you know, i think it earns from you one also because it just means that you're not trying Okay, what you're not like is just stating out right. What is your understanding of that subject? So yes, programming languages should be the first thing that you learn under skills and right under skills, right under technical skills. And I would say that um, instead of listing, probably if you've learned five to seven languages, that's great, that's fine. But if you haven't and if you're just starting out, maybe if you learn just one or two languages, also like Excel, I think सबको पता होता है. R, I think yes, one career. So, सबको वो पता होगा. So maybe just learn one more language like Python or VBA. Just one more language, and I think you'll be good to go. Because programming is all about your understanding of uh, how it works. And बाकी तो when you work, you will understand and you learn. They can शुरू बात के लिए I think just learning one two extra languages is good enough. the next technical skill that i've mentioned here is that any subject or area that you specialize in or take a special interest in other than natural science like data analysis blockchain software development so yeah at this point is something that a lot of you might want to mention and a lot of you might not want to mention and that's totally fine but uh, yeah so if you're mentioning something like data analysis again keep in mind that it's a very very subject and you must be very careful about how you mentioning it because if you mention something that has a wide range then chances are high that the recruiter will just randomly pick you up and ask you questions that might be out of your knowledge domain so yes that's uh, that that's one important you must keep in mind um another thing that i was i think I was here is that i've seen a lot of people write statistics or economics or uh, basically subjects as technical skills and i would say don't do that because a subject that you're familiar with is not a skill it's it's a subject that you have knowledge of so don't put that under a technical skills that does not create a very question um yeah i had can you scroll up a little more um i'll stop it scroll up a little more um sorry yep uh, i i was talking about positions of responsibility segment i think we would like that on the screen uh and guys while well, i go ahead with the session do tell me if i am going too fast or if you have or like questions i will address at the end of the session so don't worry i'll give you enough time for any questions that you want to ask but other than i do let like, you know if i'm going too fast or if i'm not or the bullet at point or if there's anything that you want me to change okay so the last segment of your resume that i'm talking of is positions of responsibility 
that is what I have made on this front because that is what I had spoken of in my resume. But in this is a career segment where you can talk about everything other than actual stuff. Like if there's any extracurricular activities that you're good at, something that you've played, like sports that you've played on the national level or state level, and questions that you held in your college as uh, a college society, uh, like maybe the secretary or the vice president of some event that you organized, or positions that you held in high school. So basically, your organizational skills and your leadership skills, and anything else that you want to highlight apart from your uh, actual skills. So this was the segment about the content or what you must mention. So, um, like you must be like familiar by now that part of key sections that we spoke about are the objectives, the education, the internships, the technical skills, and the positions of responsibility. Now, um, just to brief you about it, objective is a must. That's something that you must like ensure that you've written it out in a nice way. Don't make it too long, make it too short. Then always keep your education above your internship experiences because again, uh, you're freshers, you're starting out, so that is the order that should be maintained. When you're writing about your education, always start with your action papers and then go in the reverse chronological order. That is start with your graduation first and then your school details. And other than that, yep, your technical is pretty important. Your um, internship experiences will set you apart. If you have good marks, that will set you apart. Your positions of responsibility segment is not so important. And that is, you know, basically filling up the rest of this in the sheet of paper that you want to submit. But uh, yeah, I mean, make sure that that is the minimum and don't elaborate too much because yeah, while uh, your HR or recruiter take one glance at it, um, someone's going to read it in a lot of details. Yes, going on to the next segment where we are going to talk about the design. We are going to talk about how it must look. So going ahead, first things first, it must be very professional. Because remember, we are not applying for a design role. So don't make it too colorful or too bright or anything like that. It must be a professional look. Now, what do I mean by a professional look? Um, never use italics. Always ensure that your headings are in bold and caps lock. And OK, if black and white is like the most, um, I would say, the most professional colors, but if you think that uh, black and white doesn't look good and it looks too stereotype and everyone's resume has, is right, which is something that I felt personally when I was designing my resume. So, you know, you can introduce colors, but very subtly, like uh, maybe a deep shade of green, uh, like the one that I have used here in the resume, or navy blue. Uh, these are professional colors, like very really dark colors. And like when I say introduce colors, don't just fill up. So something, maybe just one fine line with a blue tinge or, or with a green tinge or something like that. Um, like never use a space and fill in the uh, sorry, so use the shape and fill in that shape with a particular color. So that is something that you must keep in mind, that you shouldn't use any colors. Don't use it. Like keep everything bold. Use standard fonts. Don't experiment too much. And like yeah, like I mentioned earlier, do not copy paste resumes or use standard templates from the internet. It creates a very bad first impression because um, tell you like uh, this is one conversation I had with my manager when I had just joined. Like uh, after I joined, like one common mistake that freshers make is that they copy a lot of things from the internet. That is starting from their HR answers to. Uh, like whatever they write in their resume to formats of the resume. And it's a very bad first impression because, like, ki ab fresher ho, ab itne to kar sakte ho ki apna resume apne tarah se design kar lo. So, yes, keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I think that's all we had to say about the content. Going ahead, um, I think I'll mention some of the key points to remember and uh, what are the common errors that we make. So, Asha, could you please scroll down to the next segment? Yes. So, I think this 
are some other very important things that you must remember. If you want, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of this. Or again, if you think you that is also fine by me. So um, I'll go point wise. The first thing is try not to exceed one page for a pressure. This is like an unsaid rule. No one states it allowed. But this is something that you must keep in mind because it, it does not create a first impression if your resume is more than one page for a fresher. And uh, yeah, a lot of recruiters will just take a look at only the first page because they get hundreds and thousands of resumes daily. So they don't want to be reading one single resume for say 10 minutes or something like that. The next don't include a photograph, date of birth, or any other irrelevant details. So how do you identify what is an irrelevant detail? So you know when you're designing a resume, think of it, think of it from the perspective of the age or the recruiter. Key. If I am looking at a candidate, am I looking to see the or are these details irrelevant when I am recruiting? So it's so true. And I think that will help you identify what are the irrelevant details that you have mentioned in your resume. So just eliminate them. Don't keep anything that is not uh, like relevant. So the third thing is don't make any spelling errors. Spelling errors, silly mistakes, and mostly these are silly mistakes that you end up making. So don't do that. If your resume is done. Just go through it properly once. Fourth, keep the design simple and formal. So yes, like I mentioned, uh, don't you don't like, just uh, keep it too bold, underlined. Uh, don't use italics and all of that, which is keep it very formal. The next is remember that you can be questioned on anything that you will include. In. So do not mention skills and programming languages that you're not confident of, about. So the reason this is the reason I had asked you to mention beginner, intermediate, or advanced beside your programming languages because that ensures that there is nothing that you will be which will be out of your knowledge domain. The next point is key. modify the objective based on the role that you're applying for. So yes, do not set out the same resume for all positions that you're applying for. Make sure that your object is in line with what job description suggests. The next point is always send it along with a cover letter and an introductory mail. So you must send a mail with uh, just your CV included nothing else like you don't throw the cover letter or an introductory email trust me no one is going to open your file and read as well so it's very important to write one or two lines as an introductory email, or to write or send along a cover letter along with it. Uh, next is try to ensure that your resume highlights your key points and strengths so yeah again this is something that i mentioned at the starting of the session itself that your resume represents you to the recruiter or the HR. And if it doesn't set you apart, then you're not going to get an interview call. And that is getting high at any company. So just remember that uh, when you're designing your resume, just see that it highlights and it uh, like clearly what your strengths are. Right? The next thing is don't use standards, which I mentioned. And last is keep it in PDF format which is um, keep it in PDF format unless uh, the recruiter has clearly asked you to keep it in some other format. And one more reason that I keep asking you to keep the format simple and formal is that uh, a lot of these uh, resumes, before the HR goes through it, they go through the process where information is extracted using a software. So if you're not, if you're keeping uh, too much of a designer resume, the software may not be able to extract the necessary information. So that is one thing. So just keep it simple and keep it PDF format under otherwise asked. So yes, I think that those are some of the key points that I had to mention about uh, how you must design your CV. So I think that is all that I wanted to mention. Yeah, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to go ahead and answer them. Or if there's anything that you want to ask me for what I discussed, I would also be happy to take them. Yes, sir. Uh, you said about cover letter. So can you tell me what are the main points to address in the cover letter? I mean, what do I write in the cover letter? What do I write in the format? Tell me. 
हाँ अच्छा सो बेसिकली द कवर लेटर इज स्टेटेड कि वाई शुड कंपनी हायर यू और वाई डू यू थिंक यूर अ गुड फिट दैट पर्टिकुलर जॉब सो सपोज यूर लाइक सपोज यूर लाइफ फॉर लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कंपनी का रोल तो लेटर के बॉडी में वन लाइन अबाउट वॉट वॉट योर क्वालिफिकेशन आर एंड जस्ट कीप इट टू वन लाइन बिकॉज यू नीड रेज्यूमे अलॉन्ग विथ इट उसके बाद वन लाइन अबाउट वाई यू टेक इंश्योरेंस एंड लाइफ इंश्योरेंस मतलब देखो to be honest when we are fresh and we are applying now we apply for all possible roles so the thing is that you have to somehow make it up whether it's genuine or not whatever it is you have to write a particular insurance insurance with the life insurance that you take interest in if you have attended a workshop related to life insurance and have you learned in that workshop why do you think that an advantage uh, as compared to other candidates so Yeah, these are the things that you must mention, and then like, politely at the end, you can write some line making, um, looking forward to connecting with you, and uh, I'm hoping that I get a chance to interview with an esteemed company like you are. Yes. So yeah, basically your cover letter is just covering why do you, the company should hire you and why you're interested in that, and what is that sets you up. Okay. For the second part, I was asking. कि आपको लगता है कि जो एच होता है या रिक्रूटर होता है ये पूरा सीवी लाइन बाय लाइन पड़ेगा क्योंकि तो मेरे को जो लगता है ना कि सारा इम्पोर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन टॉप साइड में क्रैम करके डाल दे बोर्ड में बड़ा बड़ा हमको ही लगा ये लोग मेरा टेन में क्या अवार्ड मिला था ट्वेल्व में क्या अवार्ड मिला था ये सब पढ़ने के बाद नीचे जाके देखेगा मेरा सॉफ्ट स्किल क्या ये सब हमको ही लगता है दिखेगा तो ये आपसे पूछना था कि सब कुछ ऊपर डाल दो बड़ा करके मतलब उसी में एम्फेसिस देना चाहता हूँ देखो पहले तुमको टेंथ में क्या अवार्ड मिला था ट्वेल्थ में क्या अवार्ड मिला था उसके बेसिस पे कोई रिक्रूटर तुम्हें हायर करने वाला है नहीं तो वो इन्फॉर्मेशन लास्ट वो इन्फॉर्मेशन लास्ट में डालो व्हाट यू थिंक एन एक्चुरल रिक्रूटर इज गोइंग टू लुक एट ही और शी इज गोइंग टू लुक एट कि पेपर्स कितना हुआ है इंटर्नशिप या वर्क एक्सपीरियंस वाइज कैसा है एंड थर्ड कि अगर पेपर्स के मार्क्स मैंशन की हो तो पेपर्स के मार्क्स कितना है एफ यू मैंशन की तुम मे बी मैं दो पेपर्स लिखे हो दैट इज वेन यू सीटिंग द डेट इफ दैट इज अवेलेबल तो याद है रिक्रूटर्स प्रॉब्लली गोइंग टू बी इम्प्रेस्ड कि ये बच्चा एक अटैम्प्ट में दो पेपर्स में अच्छे मार्क्स आया है दैट इज ऑल दैट इज ऑल दे गोइंग टू लुक एट दे नॉट आई मीन या सी द अवार्ड्स दैट यू और द पोजीशंस ऑफ रिस्पांसिबिलिटी दैट यू हैड हां लिखना होता है आई मीन इट यू राइट बट इट्स नॉट द की फैक्टर इन डिटरमाइनिंग व्हेदर यू बी सिलेक्टेड और नॉट सो या एंड अगर सीवी मतलब आफ्टर मेकिंग द सीवी थोड़ा वाइड स्पेसेस अगर देखे मतलब बहुत लग रहा है वाइड स्पेसेस तो वो भरने के लिए हॉबीज एंड ये सब डाल देंगे वो सब इरेलेवेंट है कोई जरूरत नहीं नहीं नेवर नो नो हॉबीज नोबडी वांट्स टू नो व्हाट योर हॉबीज व्हाट यू डू इन योर फ्री टाइम सो हॉबीज आर स्ट्रिक्ट नो खाली रहेगा सीवी चलेगा मतलब थोड़ा वाइड स्पेसेस हो गया नीचे की तरफ क्योंकि ज्यादा फॉन्ट बढ़ाने से बंदा लगता है मेकअप करने के लिए रितम मुझे तो लगता है कि सीवी में स्पेस कम पड़ता है मेरा तो कम स्पेस पड़ता था लाइक नॉट लाइक ज्यादा स्पेस बढ़ता है तुम्हारा मैं नहीं दिया आई वाज सेइंग कि मेरे तो सीवी में व्हेन आई वाज डिजाइनिंग मेरा स्पेस कम पड़ता था हाउ डिड यू गेट एक्स्ट्रा स्पेस आफ्टर राइटिंग टेक्निकल स्किल्स एंड पेपर्स एंड पेपर्स कौन से साल में क्लियर की लाइन अबाउट योर इंटर्नशिप एक्सपीरियंसेस इस पर लिखने लिखने के बाद बचता है तुम्हारा बस तो रहा था ठीक है हम देखते मैनेज करता हां मतलब डोंट राइट हॉबीज ठीक है दैट दैट इज इरेलेवेंट ओके ओके आ एनीवन एल्स हु हैज एनी क्वेश्चन हां और एनीथिंग दैट यू वांट टू आस्क और Guys, about even about uh, the interview procedures or anything else that you want to answer. I have one thing to ask. Yeah, ask. जब एडुकेशन वाले लिख रहे हैं तब तो ऑब्वियसली कॉलेज के साइड में ग्रेजुएटिंग ईयर भी लिखेंगे जैसे 2019 से 2022 लेकिन उसके साथ में ग्रेजुएटिंग मंथ में लिख दूँ क्या? कि मेरे साथ ये हुआ है मैंने एक इंटरव्यू दिया एक घंटा लंबा चला इंटरव्यू उसके बाद लास्ट में वो आदमी बोलता है कि यू आर नॉट अ ग्रेजुएट सो आई वांट गिव यू द अपॉर्चुनिटी देखो इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी ग्रेजुएटेड तब भी लिखो कि 2019 टू 2022 इफ यू हैवंट ऑलरेडी ग्रेजुएट साइड में लिखो करंट परसीवल और फिर फिर जैकेट में लिखो द ईयर 
अब करेंटली पर्सन लिखो तो क्लियरली पता चल जाए कि यू हैव एंड ग्रेजुएटेड येट दैट यू इन योर फाइनल ईयर ओके ओके हम एंड अदर क्वेश्चन या सो आज सेस ठीक ना I actually wanted to ask that apart from the resume part, I wanted to ask that what are the type of role that you particularly do as a fresher, like in the company, something around okay. that. Okay. Yeah. So I work in reinsurance thing. So basically, um, in my role, what I do is I price reinsurance contracts. That is, uh, reinsurance. What is it? You guys will know. Price reinsurance contracts is like doing an analysis to determine that. Uh, how much should the insurer pay for a reinsurance, or how much should the reinsurance come back from the insurers for their policy? So basically, I work in a broking firm, which is an, an insurance broking. Just as Watson is an insurance broking firm, so that is why we work for both reinsurers and for insurers, and we determine the price that they can expect from the market or the, the price that they must pay for their products. एंड इसके लिए एनालिसिस करना पड़ता है तो देस्ड ऑन सम स्टैंडर्ड लाइक डू ऑन योर ओन फ्रॉम योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग थोड़ा बहुत एक्सेल इट इज एक्सट्रैक्टिंग डेटा यूजिंग पाइथन क्योंकि फाइल आता है दो दर जनरली वेरी हैवी एंड या दैट्स वॉट आई डू एंड इफ यू आर सी वॉट आर दाँ शो है What are the softwares you actually use in a day-to-day? -day? Like we study VBA, SQL, and all that. But what is actually used most in the day-to-day -day workings? So, uh, to be very honest, this will completely depend on which two. Like some companies use Excel a lot. Some companies have their own software, own assurance software, like Profit and all. Just because we don't have knowledge, and nobody expects you to know those languages, also. Then again, in my company, if you ask me personally speaking, I use Excel and VBA more than I use Python. Other than that, I also use R, Python, Power BI, and all of that. So basically, at Wells Fargo Watson, we use all the all the programming languages, and it's not like that. You have to learn everything. Ah, uh, while you're working, you will and you will be able to upskill and develop an understanding of how to work with it. So. The, Like when applying, no company expects you to have a knowledge of five to seven programming languages, but they expect you to have a basic understanding of maybe one or two languages. One or two languages का basic programming uh, like techniques understanding होगा तो बाकी you can mention and manage. And profit and ये सब पे काम करना होगा profit axis modeling पे काम करना होगा तो the company will change about it. Does that answer your question, Tish? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. Um, anyone else who wants to ask anything? Okay, so I'm assuming that none of you have any other questions. So, I would like to ask uh, you guys if you found the session helpful or not, and you can give me your opinions there, honestly. Because this is like the first session that I'm conducting of this kind, so and I know Shuru made there was a little bit of mess with the voice, so I don't know. But you can tell me honestly if there's anything that you want me to change or not. Ritam, thank you. Anyone else who wants to add anything, um, any feedback? Today I am uh, reading your messages, so it's it's really nice that you found them helpful. So yeah, Shesh, uh, go ahead. I actually, I have to ask one thing. Um, huh. for the graduates of like 2022, what is the time at which the company actually starts recruiting for the next year? So see, um, there's no fixed time because actually recruitments go on all year round. Like some companies, they have specific seasons. Like I think uh, PwC has a specific season which is going on now. And uh, well, Watson's branch has 
like fruits and vegetables are also going on now. So basically, once you're on your fine, you must just keep looking through, through LinkedIn. You must keep uh, informing, checking out ki what are the roles that are uh, available. But if you ask me, ki actual recruitment ka season kya hai? Isa koi season nahi hai. It is. Uh, it is it it will be something that will uh, totally depend on the openings that are available and it goes on all year round it's a pura saal chalta hai there's no particular season and it's not like ki even if placements may not you don't get a job you won't get a job after college as such they and there are a lot of openings available now and like pehle se hota bhi tha ki chalo openings kam hai freshers ke liye ab bhi to i will say that there are a lot of openings available the openings have really increased Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, thank you all for your kind words. I'm really happy that you are this helpful. Uh, Aksha, thank you. Yes. So uh, I think that is all. Unless any of you have anything to say. Uh, okay. So bye, guys. Have a nice day. Okay. Yeah, Aksha, go ahead and ask. Hey, hi. So I wanted to ask is how is it like working in this kind of person? How has your experience um, been till now? Ah, uh, sorry. Could you repeat? Ah, uh, your voice is bad. I wanted to ask how is your experience at Willis Stars Watson? So my experience at Willis Stars Watson. Okay, yeah. So my experience at Willis Stars Watson has been really good, right? I've been working for the past one year, and I think. one thing is that we look for as freshers when we are joining him is a very receptive environment that will accept us because we feel totally out of place going to a new company and working for the first time with no knowledge of how things work so yeah i mean my team at wellness was very very accepting they've been a very supportive team i have learned a lot in the past one year and uh, as i have Really good work, as really I have a great work-life balance also. So yeah, if I start talking about how happy I am with this, so I stop there saying that it's a great experience. I have learned a lot, and I've also had a good work-life balance. So yes. Great, thanks a lot. No problem. Okay, so if uh, if any of you have anything else to say, you. Raise your hand. Else, I think we can end this call for today. Okay. So, bye, guys. Have a great weekend.